So um, welcome everybody to the Growing Your Nursing Workforce in Social Care webinar. Um, the purpose of the webinar um, was to um, share and ensure that um, nursing home providers understood and knew of all the opportunities for development for their staff, both um, progression from a nursing perspective, but also um, supporting the internal workforce in a nursing way. So it was requested off the back of the social care nursing task and finish group, which we have, which is to support the social care nursing workforce. So it was suggested that actually did everybody know what was available and, and what, what the options are. And um, so hence um, today's session was was put on um, to to explore that and find out from providers. Is this the types of um, interventions you can support? Um, so. Um, Yes, I will pass over to Lawrence um, to take you through um, the presentation and then we will also hear from a nursing associate um, that's in the role currently and also um, Ros, who's the manager in terms of finding out from a from that perspective um, how they support the service, etc. So over to you, Lawrence. Thanks. So if we can get the team to introduce themselves, so I'll start by saying that I'm Lawrence Quirk. I'm the program manager at Nottinghamshire Alliance Training Hub. And part of our role at the Training Hub is to support social care to uh, access things like learning and apprenticeships and, and help you grow the workforce as you need it to uh, in your local, your local service. So if I can hand over to Nicola Payne. Hi, Nicola Payne. Apologies, no camera, so you won't be able to see me. I'm a nurse working in various guises across the system and have been supporting the trainee nursing associate role and nursing associate role for a number of years. Thanks, Nicola. Uh, Katie, could you introduce yourself? Hello, so I'm Katie. I'm a clinical educator that works for Knotts Healthcare. Um, and my job is to support training nurse and associates within Knotts Healthcare. Yeah, that, that's me. <laughs> Great, thank you. And Roz, could you introduce yourself as well for us? Hi, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm Roz Heath. So I'm the owner manager at Landon Meads Nursing Home in Chilwell, and we've been um, supporting nursing associates since they first began. And I've got Georgia with Hi. me, so I'll let her introduce herself. Hi, I'm Georgia. Please. I'm a newly qualified nursing associate. I'm working in Landon Meads with people living with advanced dementia. That's great, thank you. OK, so in terms of the presentation today, um, we're on Teams. Uh, I don't think we need to go through this because probably people are quite familiar with Teams now. Um, and this is roughly what we're going to cover. So we're going to talk about a little bit about the progression route uh, in social care nursing, the nursing associate role and how it fits within social care and the apprenticeships. We'll have a conversation about placements and social care and also then begin to think about other staff within the service that you might want to support in terms of their continued development and where to go for help. And we've got a link at the end towards some uh, recruitment events. So in terms of, um, I'm sorry, in terms of the example progression, uh, before I hand over to Nicola, um, this is something that we, we use at NAF quite often to talk about how staff might progress from one level to the next. So you might imagine that in a service, whether that's primary care, community care or, or social care, they might start out as a healthcare assistant. Um, once they've qualified, they get their level five. So level five is equivalent to uh, the first two years of a degree and um, become a nursing associate. It may be at some point, somebody like Georgia, no pressure, Ross, that uh, wants to become a nurse um, and completes her final two years top up. And we'll talk about that in a moment um, to become a level six qualified registered nurse. And then after that, level seven is thinking about master's level or specialisms in mental health or learning disability. So if I hand over to Nicola now and we can talk about the um, uh, what is the nursing associate and the role and how it fits within social care. Thanks, Lawrence. So the nursing associate role, some people are still getting used to the, the role and the definition of the role, although it has been around for a number of years now. And the role was originally designed to what's called bridge the gap between care assistants and registered nurses, but it is a standalone role and people that complete the trainee nursing associate programme can remain a train can remain a nursing associate and don't have to then go on to complete the full nurse top up. It can be accessed via the apprenticeship route 
um, as can the um, top up to become a registered nurse. So as I said, it's a standalone role, the nursing associate, and it is regulated with the Nursing and Midwifery Council. So there's a, a code of conduct that our nursing associates have to abide by in the same way as nurses, and they also get a PIN number so that they are on the register. The, the role itself is as it says on the slides, vital to improve the quality of care and health outcomes, but it also gives people that have been working in a healthcare assistant, care assistant role, the opportunity to progress in the, the field of work that they love and enjoy, but without having to go on and do the full nursing. It gives people a, another option and to also remain within the social care provider. The role can be trained across all four fields of nursing, so adult, children, learning disability and mental health, and we're seeing them across all different types of health and care settings now. So this is predominantly talking to social care providers, but the acute hospital trusts have them, primary care, learning disability providers, and also the community health care team, so district nursing teams. Next slide, please. So what a nursing associate actually does in practice is really down to the individual organisation and the parameters that they want to set. So they can support the, the nursing role, but also support continue to support the care assistant role. So they'll be working under the super, supervision of nursing staff, but they don't always need direct supervision. And there may be some elements that require direct supervision. They can contribute to the assessments, delivery and monitor plan care for the people using the service. So those residing within care home settings. And because the nursing associate role is one that's looking at assessments, um, they can also support with the planning of that individual's care and developing those person-centred care plans. They are a huge asset to multidisciplinary teams and their voice is recognised. I know that some people find their voice um, still being heard, but the, the, as the role becomes more frequently understood within health and care, um, they'll continue to contribute to those multidisciplinary teams. So I anticipate that when the ward rounds, so those um, colleagues from general practice coming into care providers, the nursing associate can be part of those ward rounds and providing information and updates on the people accessing the services. They'll also provide a, a range of clinical skills. So you can see from the list, venipuncture, weight and BMI checks, ECGs, wound care, and measuring and interpreting blood glucose levels. As we say, it really depends on the individual service as to how they want the nursing associates to work in their organisation. Next slide, please. So the NMC framework, Nursing and Midwifery Council framework, gives a scope of practice and you can see on the slide the differences between the nursing associate role and the registered nurse role. What's key is that both roles are accountable professionals and the, there are a number of similarities across the two, but the nursing associates will be supported by registered nurses within the organisation. Next slide, please. So the route to becoming a student nurse, ultimately the organisation needs to identify that it's a role they need within their organisation and ensure that they've got the support with the nursing workforce to be able to support the trainee nursing associate. So those that might want to become a nurse, nursing associate are people that want to look at career progression, but it might also be that a care provider uses it to recruit staff into the organisation and advertises it as a brand new role rather than just offering it to the workforce. We can also look at how international nurses coming over might want to be able to join as a nursing associate. In terms of qualifications, it is the level two or equivalent for maths and English, and it is desirable but not essential to have a level three qualification. 
and there's also the option for retire and return nurses um, to come in. Okay, so student trainee nursing associate placements, it, they are 15 to 20 weeks on placement over the two years. So there's a number of universities that offer this programme. There are a couple of local within the East Midlands patch and it is dependent on the university. There will be a requirement for the trainee nursing associate to leave the organisation and to experience placements in other organisations such as hospitals and primary care and that gives them the option to, to look at the, the range of nursing out there but also understand the patient journey and pathways that are in, in existence. The employer will continue to pay the salary whilst the individual is on placement, be that in the organisation or externally, but the university does help to organise the external placements. Thanks, Nicola. Um, I'm going to stop sharing for a second so that perhaps we can bring in Georgia and, and Georgia can talk to us a little bit about what she does in, uh, in Chilwell in terms of uh, being a, a nurse associate and the course perhaps. So Georgia, tell us about tell us about your your course. How did, how did that work for you in terms of the learning and the and the commitment? How did you find it? So I, I trained in um, at Nottingham Trent University. I found the course itself really informative. That it was really well thought out and had been developed great. Um, I found that some points were more leaning towards healthcare, and as coming from a social care background, we did have to sort of dig a bit deeper to find out how that knowledge transpired to us and how we then had to use that within our, you know, place of practice. And, mm -hmm. and like Nicola said, it's different depending on where you are, and social care and healthcare are so different. The placements were a bit hit and miss, but I was a, a student through COVID, so that's to be expected. Okay. Um, we were given some great opportunities. There was always, you know, if, if a placement wasn't always somewhere that we could easily access, we were always given the choice to try and look into something else, to delve into other places. They were great in encouraging us to, to look into different areas that we'd like to go to. Um, in regards to how that is now, being qualified and, and in the place of work that I am, um, continued support. The university still email us and continued support from our employers. You know, we've had a great, we've been very lucky that everyone around us, all the nurses that we work with are very, they all find the role incredibly beneficial and they all see that a nurse and associate you know, like I said, is a standalone role and that we can bring so much to the team from our prior knowledge of the people in our care and from our knowledge of being support workers or healthcare assistants. So I found it a great way to study, working at the same time. The the learning on the job was, for me, one of the easiest things I think I've done in, in that sense, that you were able to put something into practice as soon as you learnt it, see exactly how you could take it from the lecture room to your workplace and the benefit that it really did have of being able to do that. Um, the continued opportunities to work with different environments and to work with different teams was great. And I think because... Of, of you know of working in a nursing home and working with similar people throughout my training I've been able to have various different outside teams see me develop as well so now that I'm in the role they've almost seen me grown grow through it and have got that trust that they know where I started and and why I'm you know where I am now so that it, I found it a, a really great way to study and I think it, it's been really beneficial to our workplace. That's brilliant. Thank you, Georgia. That's really good, uh, good comprehensive uh, conversation about uh, and examples of how the, how the learning's helped. Katie, would you like to talk a little bit about sort of the role and, and how it's worked within the Healthcare Trust? Yeah, of course. So um, from what you were saying, I guess I can see that within health, the training nurse and associate role is very, very different in each area because the team will work with the individual to create that role for them that's it's there's a purpose for it it's it's needed in that service so the example that I'll give is that yesterday I went to go and see two training nurse and associates in practice the first of which was in a healthy family team and they've taken a, a role with anger management for younger children in primary schools and in high schools and um, the part of safeguarding meetings so that was their role and then in the afternoon, I went into a ward setting and the person I was working with was doing ECGs. They were doing wound care and um, they were part of um, meetings with other other providers um, and 
the the diff the difference was huge. They've both got completely different skills and they've been supported within their role to make it their own. Um, so I think the role's fantastic because it literally you can make it into what you want, what you need, um, and the ability to progress is amazing if I, when I was doing my nurse training if this was about I most definitely would have done this you get to see all four fields of nursing which isn't an opportunity that I had I don't know if I'd have come into mental health if I'd have seen children's or something but you get to see all four fields and experience a bit of it all uh, you get to experience community inpatient end of life care you know from birth to death everything um so it's an experience that I think I think it's amazing. <laughs> Thanks, Katie. I think what's, what both of you have said as well is that there's a real sense it's part of a multidisciplinary team and multidisciplinary working as well. And I think that's really important that we stress that it's it's not working in isolation and it's actually making a huge contribution to the work and the, and the, of the service or the provider. So thank you for that. So shall I continue with the presentation unless you want to make any other comments um, and we can move on to how people get trained up and and things like that now. So thanks Georgia for your time and uh, 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 good luck with any further studies and uh, continued work. So in terms of um, support for for, uh, for staff that want to undertake the nursing associate role, um, it is a two year foundation degree course um, where staff, uh, as George has just said, are released uh, to, to do the lectures and the, and the theory behind the practical uh, work in the workplace and once completed they are at level five so that's the first two years of a degree um, uh, uh, which is which is a really valuable uh, qualification to have as part of an apprenticeship program um, there is something called the endpoint assessment where the KSBs or knowledge skills and behaviors are assessed so um, this is where you you have lots of different criteria to say what skills and knowledge you have and you have to show evidence to support that so it may be for example that you're asked to show a particular bit of knowledge and you've got a, either got a, an essay that you've written or you've been assessed in the workplace to show that you are competent in that skill uh, and that all gets recorded in a portfolio so it covers a range of practical skills um, and that, and not every opportunity might be there to do things like moving and handling so you might have to have a look at that and you might have to work with others around medicine management but there is an opportunity to sort of look at most practical skills within the within the care setting and as we said it does include placements um, to show different care settings and that's really valuable because again it helps to give a more rounded experience to a learner uh, as they go through the, the course so in terms of funding for apprenticeships and social care, um, uh, the main way that they are funded is, is through the apprenticeship levy. Now, large employers um, um, will be able to access the apprenticeship levy through their own, own organisation. But if they're not uh, a large employer and it's just a small home or small provider, then they can talk to the training hub, they can talk to others in the, in the system to enable them to access the apprenticeship levy hosted by uh, Nottingham University Hospitals. What the apprenticeship levy does is it pays for 100% of the tuition fees. It doesn't pay for the salary, but it does pay for 100% of the tuition fees. So that means all the learning, uh, all the all the uh, uh, that uh, that they undertake at university is covered. Uh, and as I've said, that the other you know, other large organisations, such as Nottingham University Hospitals, for example, often gift or transfer their levy to enable smaller organisations to benefit uh, from the same opportunities. And uh, the, the NAF or the Training Hub is available to help you through that process. So the contact details for us are at the end of the presentation. Um, just in terms of who's offering the course locally, um, we know that Nottingham Trent, Derby, Lincoln, De Montfort and University of Sheffield are just a few of the providers that are offering the nursing associate uh, course. Um, there are also courses with the likes of the Open University and further afield, uh, but they're the courses that we would often see people signposted to or taking up places in, partly because it means that they can actually get to the uh, lectures if they're doing face to face um, days at the universities a bit easier. So just want to talk a little bit now about the uh, the student nurse place.
it's a great opportunity for care providers to think about could they host a placement uh, for, an alter, for another student, maybe in the same organisation, but just a different service down the road, or maybe from outside of uh, social care and in primary care, for example. As a host, um, that student, uh, that, that organisation, the provider would be paid a tariff for hosting that student. Um, currently, that's about £120 per week. What's good about sort of the students is that they bring a different sense of uh, learning, the different experiences from outside of your organisation, and it helps to sort of broaden and diversify the knowledge that you have. And all the students will bring that evidence based practice. So as, as Georgia said, she, she learned something in the lecture theatre and she brings it into the workplace and practices it. And that's a really valuable exercise for all students and for, for uh, all organisations to benefit from. Um, it can be a quite a rewarding experience for the staff to support the learners, and I'll talk a little bit about what the sport is in a second. Um, and it can also be an opportunity to sort of grow and have that pipeline of learners uh, within the um, uh, within your, your your thinking in terms of recruitment. So it could be that we begin to think about recruiting those third year students on graduation. And it raises the social care nursing profile. Um, yeah, uh, as as Georgia mentioned. Quite often, uh, social care is is a small cohort of learners, and it's great to bring their input into the university environment and to the course. It shows the diversity and breadth of uh, what nursing can be, and it enables other people to think about working not just in ward settings or primary care settings, but also in care providers. In terms of the support, um, any student, um, nursing associate, nurse or otherwise, needs to have a qualified supervisor and assessor. Uh, and that would be somebody that can guide and support them through applying their practical skills in the workplace and making sure that they are assessed to say that they're competent uh, back at the university. They'd also have a personal tutor and a clinical educator who would work with them to make sure that the, the learning and the theory goes well, that they understand the course requirements, that they address any problems uh, from a personal point of view or from a, a, a learning's point of view, not just from a sort of educational point of view, and access to the student support services. That's really crucial to make sure that the, the student has a good good well-being support alongside all of the learning because we have to remember people are learning alongside work and there can be quite a lot of pressures. Supervisors themselves need to be suitably qualified as we said uh, so typically they have the student supervisor student assessor qualification as a nurse and this is a short course that they can do to make sure that they've got adequate knowledge and skills to support a student in the workplace. Um, they provide some feedback and they uh, receive feedback from the university and from the student themselves so that they have a sense of how they're working as an educator and what they need to do perhaps next time as, a, as an educator and supervisor. Um, and they would also have regular liaison with the university because it's really important to see that, that somebody as a supervisor can see that how a student's working in practice um, because that's what the, the university lecturers don't see. The, in practice, their skills and their knowledge and their confidence might be very different from when they're sitting in a classroom environment. So if I stop sharing again, um, and we'll bring Roz into the uh, conversation. Hi, Roz. So can you okay. can you talk to us a little bit about um, what it's like having student uh, either student nurses, sorry, student nurse associates with you either as a as part of the team or on placement or and also about what you feel the role brings to your your care, your um, your service? Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, uh, as I said, when I started off, um, we've been doing a we've been doing we've been supporting our staff to go through the um nursing associate for right from when it first started so we put people through every single year and we'll continue to do so while we can um for several reasons i think they've all been touched on at different times but if i summarize first of all it was really important um and is still important to us that there's a career pathway in social care um because all too long there's been um there's been a ceiling, haven't they? People come along as care staff, you have team leader roles or whatever different places call it, but people don't tend to move out those roles very much. So there isn't, there wasn't anything ever for people to go in terms of their career progression. So we first did it um, because we had lots of staff we'd identified that had loads and loads of potential to do more than they're doing, and we didn't want to lose them because they could bring so much to us. Um, so for example, Georgia was here as a student, 
um, and she, um, and she was 18 at the time, just working here at weekends. And uh, she worked through COVID and she changed her whole career pathway because we could give her the opportunity to actually move on to, to get somewhere with that. Um, so, and there were lots of, of people that we have who thought they would never get anywhere because they had no qualifications. And suddenly the apprenticeship route gave them the ability to actually move on as well. So in terms of their job satisfaction, their ability to move on, it, it's absolutely fantastic. And that, we will continue to do that. Um, we also identified that if we wanted to keep doing, um, providing real quality care with staff that really get what we do in terms of our ethos, the best people were the people that um, had been with us right from uh, when they've been with uh, as care assistants. They'd really got that and therefore they take that into the nursing associate role. So when they qualify, they have their clinical skills are enhanced, but they also bring that whole sort of wealth of, of, of um, knowledge around what we do, why it's important and can embed that as well. We also wanted to make sure that social care was credible as a nursing career because too often it's been the place where people have gone be, I don't know, when they've got while they've got children and it fits around schools or when people want to retire and they go to nursing homes etc there is a whole vibrancy of younger people that really would want to work in social care if the route's there so it brings that credibility to it as well um and very practically there's a shortage of nurses same as there is in the hospitals and so many places care homes rely on, on agencies to pay for 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 uh, to, to, to do the nursing who and I'm sure there's lots of good agency nurses as well but a lot of them people are there who are, go to different places they don't get to know the people you look after uh, and, and it is a role which they dip in and out of um so to us it gave our nurses were far far more able to look after the people because they know them and secondly on a very sort of financial basis agency costs a fortune mm. um and even though nursing associate takes investment, I believe it pays off in the end because we we haven't used agency nurses for years, um, and we have we you know we have sort of staffed it with both our nursing associates and we now have several going through to do their full nursing degree as well. That's great. I mean, I'm getting I'm getting a real sense of growing your own in your Absolutely. service. So you know that that's that's really strong. Um, that's great. Thank you for that. And and quite timely because I'm going to talk on about what's what the next steps might be for somebody that's a nurse associate. So thanks for your time today. Okay. Thanks, Ross. Uh, okay. share, I'll share screen again just to continue. So in terms of what's next for a nurse associate, so perhaps after qualification they could consider uh, completing their nurse training as Ros has just spoken about and I think that's a really good you know good example of how a home is growing their own and growing their own workforce and enabling people to, to provide really good quality care. Um, the nurse associate joins uh, part way through the nurse degree course um, and um, it's it means that they are able to sort of uh, work alongside existing students and it can either be either a apprenticeship funding again or it could be self-funding or maybe a generous employer can support, sponsor them um, but certainly it's a great opportunity to sort of grow and continue that that, that, that development professionally. In terms of nurses in social care, um, just some of the things around their own continuing professional development. So it could be around things like supervisor and assessor training to support student nurse associates and other staff within the workplace. There may be opportunities to attend short courses, whether they're one to two hours on things say like wound care updates, um, uh, refreshing on how to how to undertake an ECG or, or venipuncture or any sort of changes that come in clinically and homes are advised to do. There are um, many accredited courses out there. Many are university level uh, modules, so they might be level six, level seven. Um, uh, some staff will start by perhaps doing a non-medical prescribing module, or they might start by doing something more specialist around learning disability or mental health to do with their home. And again, you can progress on to do a master's in advanced clinical practice, and that's something we haven't yet seen maybe uh, so much of in social care, but that option is available um, for staff. Um, we, we have to talk about, in terms of social care, we have to talk about the whole team as well, because we talked a little bit about its multidisciplinary team, um, but I think it's worth flagging up that in terms of the, the, the wider team within a home or, or provider environment, um, 
there are also admin staff, there are business managers, there are cooks, there are cleaners, everybody, and they all have the opportunity to undertake an apprenticeship at some point if they want to grow and develop and change their roles. Um, so everything from level two upwards to level seven could be supported as an apprenticeship. And those topics could be administration, business related. They could also be care related, such as the adult care worker. Um, as Ros has alluded to, some people step up into leadership roles and there are some leadership uh, apprenticeships. Um, but it may be that people want to undertake a course that's more akin to a, an allied health professional, such as a physio or an occupational therapist. And those courses are equally av available to people if they have the sufficient background skills and knowledge to do so. We've got three organisations that I just want to flag up to people. Uh, one is Care for Knots. Um, so Care for Knots do a lot of work around work experience, careers in health and social care, and they also have the Pathways Project into health and social care as well. So they can support people, not just from a school age, but for uh, as adults as well that perhaps want to change careers and want to think about work experience, but don't know where to start. Uh, so my own organisation, the uh, Training Hub, um, we have uh, we can offer support with the apprenticeship levy and the apprenticeships themselves. We can support around facilitating the uh, placements. It's part of our uh, bread and butter work, working with universities to make sure that students get a good placement and that we've also got organisations that can host them. And we can support as well with some funding around uh, continuing professional development. Um, as we move forward and then we've got I don't know Nat if you're still on the call but we've got skills for care um, and uh, skills for care offer support to individuals employers PAs uh, leaders and managers uh, they can work with organizations around recruitment and workforce development and and have a whole series of events that can support care providers and, and services with different uh, uh, knowledge and uh, to improve their their recruitment activities and lastly, I just want to flag up um, Joanne Beeman. Jo so Joanne has been on a particular project with uh, NOTS ICS as a workforce project lead, uh, sp specifically focused around learning disability and autism and the rollout of the trainee nurse associate. Um, Joe's project comes to an end in March. Unfortunately, she's not very well today, um, but um, certainly if you want to contact her, her email address is there at the end uh, of the slide. I think that's all we have today. I'll stop sharing. Thank you, Lawrence, and thanks for taking um, us through that. Uh